Hey guys, Logan here from Web3 Foundation Technical Education Team. Today I want to talk to you about how you can create and use a multi-signature account. So a multi-signature account is an account that requires one or more parties to approve an extrinsic before that extrinsic is executed on chain. So this is different from the normal concept of an account on Polkadot. Because the normal concept of an account is a one-to-one -one mapping of a private key to uh, to execution access of an account. So multi-sigs are a bit different because instead of having a one-to-one -one mapping of a private key to execution access, the execution access of a multi-signature account is controlled by a threshold of the signers that are involved in that multi -sig. So when someone generates a multi-sig, the multi-sig has an address that is deterministically generated based on two things. On the signers that are involved, so if the signers are, let's say, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and the threshold that's required of these signers. So if it's a two of three multi-sig, it would require two of the three signers to approve an extrinsic before that extrinsic is executed. So to give you an example, here I have here a diagram. So I've represented the multi-sig as a robot account because the multi-sig account doesn't actually have a, a private key controlling it. So the accounts on the top, which are the ones that compose the multi-sig, they each have a private key that can control access to that account. While the multi-sig account is controlled by the logic that's coded into the multi-sig palette. So it's what's known as a module owned account. So let's go through the steps of how these three signers, call them Alice, Bob, and Charlie, will execute a transfer using this multi-sig account. So the first step is for uh, the Alice to call approve as multi and pass in a hash of the call that she wants to be executed. Now, either Bob or Charlie need to uh, also approve this call, but when they approve this call, they need to put in the call data as well, because Alice only provided a hash of the call data. Uh, without the full call data, the multisig wouldn't know what kind of forensic to execute. So when Charlie comes and gives his approval to the multisig, he'll call the as multi function, which instead of taking the hash of the call data, will instead take the full call data. So Charlie passes in his approval and also says the call is for a transfer of let's say 10 dots to some third account date. So because this multi-sig is a threshold of two, which means it needs two of the three signers to approve it, as soon as it gets Alice's approval and Charlie's approval, then that multi-sig will execute. So when Charlie passes in the call data, the call data will get hashed uh, as part of the logic of the multisig. If this hash matches the hash that Alice had provided the multisig, then the multisig has reached its threshold of two approvals. So the multisig will execute that transfer and send Dave 10 dots. So let's go a bit into how you can create a multisig, and then I'll talk a bit about how you can use the multisig. Okay, so what I have here is a development chain. Uh, we're running uh, substrate development. And if you're familiar with uh, development chains, you'll know that it's populated automatically with a set of accounts. That's what I have here is the uh, automatic development accounts. And what we'll do is we'll set up a multi-sig account that's composed of Alice, Bob, and Charlie. So Polkadot.js apps has a button on the accounts tab. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to click this button and this will give us a list of available signers that we can put into the multi-sig account. So I'll pick Alice, Bob, and Charlie, like I said before. And now it asks us what threshold we want for the transfer. So remember the threshold is the number of accounts that need to approve an extrinsic before that extrinsic can be executed. So since we only have three signers, we only really have three. We have uh, one, which means just one person can execute 
multi-sig um, by themselves. Uh, two, which means three need to approve, or three, which means all three signers need to approve. Um, what we'll do is we'll set up a two of three multi-sig. So we'll set the threshold to two, and then we'll set some metadata, uh, the name. Call this my sig. And we click create, and it creates a new multi-sig. Um, and it shows up here in the accounts tab. Now this multi-sig account uh, hasn't actually been created on chain yet. Uh, what Polkadot.js apps does is it, it generates the account um, because the account is deterministically generated and uh, it puts it, puts it into the contacts that we have. So um, in order to create this account, we of course need to send it the, um, the existential uh, deposit. So we'll send out from Alice the multi-sig account enough funds to cover the existential deposit and we'll see down here that the transaction was successful this account has been created on chain you know that because you see the system new account uh, notification that showed up there um so now what we want to do is we want to uh we want to execute this multi-sig. So let's add just a dummy account here. We'll call this, um, call this just a uh, no name account. Uh, and then we'll password in here. And we'll just use this no name account as demonstration, demonstration purposes to uh, show you that the multi-sig can uh, execute a transfer um, with approval of two of the three Alice, Bob, Charlie, um, to this no name account. So right now the no name account has zero funds. And what we'll do is we'll transfer 10 funds. To so what we can do is, uh, using polka.js apps, we can just click the send button and it, uh, it gives us just the traditional transfer option. So we'll put in. Uh, the 10 units that we'll want to try. Now it'll give us the next um, box, which will ask us who we want to sign this from. Um, do we want to sign it from Alice, Bob, or Charlie? So we'll sign this from Alice. And um, what we have here is the call data hash, like uh, I mentioned before. So when we're calling just an approve transaction, um, We'll just use the hash. If we were going to call the final approval, we would send the full call data, and we do that by clicking this option here. But for now, uh, we can just store the hash because this is only the first approval. So Alice will send the first approval. We'll click sign and submit. We'll wait for that to go through. And we'll see a notification that pops up that says there's one approval uh, with a pending extrinsic. So we know that this multi-sig has a extrinsic that's already gotten one approval and it's just waiting now for the next approval to come before that's executed. So we can use the same interface um, this time. Uh, we'll send from a different signer. Uh, we'll make sure that we put in the same amount. If there's any difference in the call data, Right, and write the arguments that we give to the call, such as the amount we put 11, that will create a whole a different hash and mean that there uh, will be two pending extrinsics for this. So we have to be sure that we put in the exact same arguments into the function. Click make transfer. This time we'll send it from Charlie. And uh, the UI is smart enough to realize that uh, this is the final approval, so it just automatically clicks this button for us. And we can uh, sign and submit that. We'll get a bunch of uh, success notifications. We see that the multi-sig has transferred 10 units from, from the multi-sig account to the no-name account.
So that's how we use a multisig if we're just sending a basic transfer, uh, extrinsic call. But what if we wanted to send something more advanced? So using a multisig, we can execute any call that's encoded in the chain's logic. So whether this is a staking call, a call to identity, uh, a call to balances like transfer and so on. Um, however, the way Polkadot.js apps has implemented this, uh, we only have a convenience function here for transferring funds. So if we want to send a more advanced extrinsic, what we'll have to do is we'll go into the developer tab in Polkadot.js apps, click the extrinsics uh, button. Uh, we'll use the signer account that we want to send from. So the three signers we have are Alice, Bob, and Charlie. And then we'll select the multi-sig palette. Now, if we're going to use approve as multi, uh, which can be any of the approvals except for the final approval, we need the call hash. Now, the, there's a few different ways you can get the call hash. Probably one of the easiest ways would be to use the um, JavaScript tools on, uh, on apps. Um, but you can also uh, use the as multi function if you're doing it this way. And it will give you the, the ability to pick the call directly here. Now this isn't the most efficient way to do the multi-sig calls because essentially you're um, putting more value, more, putting more data than you need to put in this call. Um, but it is easier from a user uh, interface perspective. So um, I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but what you would do is you would go through the kind of call that you want to make, put in all the arguments, and then click submit transaction. And then you would have, uh, you would repeat that for every other signer that you would have. So that wraps up the video on how to use a multi-sig account. I hope that this video uh, helped to elucidate what a multi-sig is and how you can use it. Um, and I hope in the future you can use a multi-sig yourself to manage your accounts.